Thank you for tuning in to Snapped. I'm your host, Brandon Evans, and today we're going to be looking at one of the most unique yet odd camera lines ever, and more specifically, the Sony Mavica CD-1000. This camera right here is one of the weirdest cameras I've ever purchased in my life, so with that being said, uh, there's a big fly, big fly. So with that being said, it's obviously one of the most exciting ones I've yet to play with, and I can't wait to see how this goes, because already it's going so great. So the way that this show works, we're going to go over four key points here. We're going to go over the history of the camera. We're going to go over the specifications of the camera. We're going to do a field test, and then we're going to give our impressions of the camera. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the history review. Sitting here with me today at Craighead Forest Park, we have not one but two models from the Sony Mavica line, although we're going to be mostly focused on the CD-1000. This one is going to be for a later episode. The Sony Mavica line actually started in 1981 when Sony unveiled the Sony Mavica, the original camera. This was the world's first electronic still image camera. It wasn't until the late 90s that they would actually switch over to actual floppy disks and the actual 8mm CD. Which, funny enough, the CD-1000 here was the first camera that was ever in the Sony Mavica line to run off of a CD. So with that being said, we have ourselves a nice little piece of history here, and I'm very excited to go into it. Why don't we go ahead and take a look into the specifications of this camera? All right, so doing a little bit of research on this camera, it was actually very difficult to find any information on it whatsoever, seeing as how these are such obscure cameras and nobody really has them anymore. I was lucky enough to find one of these on eBay, so with that being said, I feel extremely lucky. It wasn't until I stumbled across a YouTube video by the channel of Ian's Tech that I was able to find out much about this camera at all. I sent the man a message on Twitter and he luckily got back to me and I can't thank you enough for that, so shout out to you, Ian. All right, so the CD-1000. This thing shoots at a whopping 2.1 megapixels. Pretty crazy, right? Honestly, at the time, that was probably, like, I don't know, forefront of technology. That's kind of crazy to think about, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, this is the best we had? That's it? <laughs> 2.1 megapixels. That is, that is crazy. It has built-in image stabilization. This thing can, in fact, shoot video, whereas this one cannot but this thing can only shoot up to clips of 15 seconds in duration. So if you're planning on making a movie with that, one, you're gonna need a lot of CDs, and two, you're gonna have to have a lot of patience. One of the coolest things about this camera that I find personally is that it has an electronic viewfinder, which is nothing new for Sony considering they've been doing that for so long now, but it's still cool to see such an old piece of technology have something that's still used today like that. Now where this camera really starts to shine is the 10 times optical zoom and 20 times digital zoom, which was pretty impressive for back in the day. You can tell that people were impressed by this, including Sony themselves, by the stickers that they put all over the lens of the camera. It's so funny how back in the 90s, they just like had stickers all over their products to tell you everything about it. One of the stickers even goes as far as saying this thing can take up to 1,000 pictures in a battery life and can last up to one and a half hours. But boy, oh boy, do I have some news for you. With that being said, that's all there really is to know about this camera unless you go on the deep web and some deep government articles on this thing because I haven't found anything else. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into the field test, take it out, take some pictures, and see how it goes. I walked out onto the trail and I eventually came across this white van parked behind the tree line. I thought it looked pretty cool so I decided to take a second photo. I'm going to be shooting this pavilion right here. Do keep in mind that I was shooting these photos in the TIFF file format. It's a little bit larger than JPEG in file size and has less compression making the edits better. However, this significantly increases the time that it takes for the camera to write the image onto the disc. But so far, everything was going fun. But of course, as it turns out, this was actually working against me rather than for me. Boy, oh boy. 
do I have some news for you? So we got some pretty decent photos on this thing. And as it stands, 23 photos is what we got to before the disc filled up, which is admittedly a lot less than I was anticipating. However, it, I mean, I paid $10 for 10 discs. So it's like 10 rolls of film for $10. Basically you're at that value. But then again, maybe if I switch it to JPEG and actually shooting like, you know, how most people would rather than in TIFF, it would be just fine. But um, looks like we're not getting much out of this anymore. And in fact, we've literally been shooting for all of 30 minutes and uh, this thing's almost dead from a full battery. So if that says anything. Well, is this it? Did I finally waste my money on a camera? Was it worth it? Are you happy with yourself? Wouldn't you have just been better off shooting film? Twenty-three photos, man. Could have brought the AE one. Well at least had twenty-four. Maybe thirty-six. Like I don't know. But would I let this dead battery and enormous file size stop me from shooting with this camera? Absolutely not. I packed my bag, grabbed multiple CDs, and went back out the next day to take some more photos. So with my camera freshly set to JPEG and two fully charged batteries, I went out and did just that. I gotta say, I'm actually pretty glad I went out and shot again anyway because these photos turned out a whole lot better. This photo serves as a great example of how well the zoom works on this camera. So far I was noticing that the battery life was doing much better. I was actually pretty impressed and I actually only had to use one battery for this trip. And on top of that, the photos were writing to the disc so much faster now that it was in JPEG. Which I'm pretty sure saved the battery. I did notice when editing these photos that I had less control over the edits. But overall, I still think they turned out well. So let's go ahead and hop into my thoughts. It is that time to go ahead and take a deep dive into my head and look at the thoughts and impressions regarding the Sony Mavica CD1000 and my experience using it thus far. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to say this in the easiest way I can word it. This camera and using it has been an experience. And what I mean by that is there is a lot that goes into this and this has been a long time in the making for a couple of different reasons. Now as rudimentary as it seems, I really think the most effective way that I can break down my thoughts on this camera is putting it in a pros and cons list. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and hop into that. So one thing that this camera has going for it is obviously the design of it. It is very interesting and unique and it's built like there is no other camera like this out there. So with that being said, I've had a bunch of people stop me and ask, hey, what kind of camera is that? Or even, hey, what is that? And I think that is such a good thing for this camera. <laughs> like, it's so fun to have people just like really curious asking questions about it. Like, oh, when's it from? And so just on the looks alone of it, I'd give that a pro because it's just interesting. I can also tell you as a pro, the zoom on this is pretty good. I mean, obviously I've reviewed cameras in the past that have had much better zooms and much better sensors and much better specs in general, but you know, this is from a completely different time period and you know, for the forefront of technology at that time, this is a very nice camera. 
Furthermore, there are a lot of other functions on this camera that I've come to really appreciate, such as the built-in white balance button. You can point your camera at your subject that you're wanting to take photos of or videos of. You can press the white balance button and it'll take care of it for you. It's super easy and most cameras, including the one I'm shooting on right now, don't even have that function. I have to go into the settings and pick from white balance presets and it's just, this is so useful. I guess you could also go ahead and say that the flash is built into this thing. Uh, it's kind of a plus, I mean, because this is not really good at night photography, so having a flash on it is a help. I wouldn't necessarily classify as that like a super big reason as to why you should buy this camera because, you know, most cameras have them. And with all this being said about this camera, believe it or not, those are all of the pros that I can really give this thing because the cons, Oh, the cons. They have definitely outweighed the pros. And let me just go ahead and say that I'm not, I'm not, I don't hate this camera. It's just due to the circumstances that I had to go through to get this thing to work, it was a mess. And I'll go ahead and tell you what I mean by that. So not only did I have to spend money on the camera, obviously, to make this review, but I also had to spend money on other things which were equally as hard to find. One of those items being the camera battery charger. Now, at first I had to do some research just to find out what kind of batteries these took. And it turns out that the batteries are actually somewhat common from what I understand. It is a F550 battery from Sony. So yeah, I was actually able to find one of these on eBay for a pretty low price, but Granted, I did have to wait a week or so for this to come in, so there was a good time where I was not able to shoot on this camera, so. Now, as far as the CD1000 goes, it did also come with a plug for the wall, and you can actually plug this straight into the camera and provide it some power, but through my usage of this camera and my experience, I have gathered that this does not, one, charge the battery as fast, or two, even charge the battery as much like whenever I take the battery out of the camera and put it directly into the wall, I just feel like it charges faster. So with that being said, this has not been too much of a use for me. I just prefer putting it directly into the wall. Now following that, we also have the issue that this camera, believe it or not, does not have its own battery to run the clock in the camera. Meaning, whenever you take the main battery out of the camera, go plug it into the wall so you can charge it, Every time you put the battery back in, you have to enter the date and re basically reset up the camera. And it's a little bit annoying, uh, especially whenever, you know, you, you do have to do that every time you charge the camera. Meanwhile, this camera has its very own built-in battery solely to run the clock, meaning I never have to reset this thing back up whenever I charge it or anything like that. So for being a much bigger camera and having more features, it really kind of blows my mind that I have to set this thing up every time I charge it. And the annoyances do not stop there and unfortunately they keep growing as you have to also have the CDs for this camera to shoot on and of course the camera did not come with them. So of course I took myself to eBay and found this pack of CDs for $10. It comes with 10 CDs and yeah, like you saw earlier in the video, I'm getting about 23 photos out of these. However, I will say whenever I did switch the camera from TIFF to JPEG, I did see better results. However, I still don't know how far these CDs can go on JPEG. I've seen people say that they can go up to 200 images, but with my experience, I'm really kind of doubting that. And of course, I will never know because that leads me into the next point. So in order to take the images off of the camera, Sony put in place a USB slot on the camera where you can use this weird looking cord which I also had to purchase on eBay. You see, Sony wanted you to be able to plug in one end of this cord directly into your camera and the other right into your computer and transfer the images without ever even having to take the CD out of the camera which objectively is a great idea but of course there is a issue with that. And that issue would be that the drivers used for this cord and this camera are no longer available on the internet anywhere. So this cord, useless. So 
that leaves me with the last option and the most inconvenient option. So every time that I want to take a look at the photos I've taken on this camera, I have to finalize the disc, meaning you can no longer write information to the disc. Meaning, if I go outside and take 10 photos and then finalize the disc so I can have them on my computer, I can no longer take photos on the disc unless I reinitialize the disc, which you can do and I have done, but that takes up to 20 megabytes of storage on the CD and of course these CDs are only 200 megabytes so you're really only getting to do this a couple of times before you're completely out of space. And of course if you're shooting on TIFF and have much larger file sizes, you might be in the position where you take six photos and then close the disc so you can take the photos off, reinitialize it, and you might only get one more photo out of the thing. I don't know, I haven't tested that necessarily, but I would personally say this is a pretty big flaw, and I'm not sure if back in the day they had a better system going for this and technology's so outdated now so it doesn't work as well. Like, I don't know what the thing is, or if this camera was literally just this inefficient. So with that being said, I have some complaints with this camera. It's been annoying. I've had to wait for packages to come in the mail left and right, which is why it's taken me so long to produce this episode. And yeah, it's just been a pretty bad experience. But you know, somehow inside of me somewhere, I still have a place of love for this camera just because of how weird it is and how wacky and odd the experience was. I just, I don't know. I don't see myself getting rid of this camera. And do I regret purchasing it? Definitely not. But would I ever consider using this as a regular camera to take photos? Absolutely not. In fact, this is probably just going to be an ornament of my camera collection from this point forward. With all of that being said, I have no further comments or thoughts on this camera. So I will see you guys on the next episode of Snap. Once again, I'm your host, Brandon Evans. And I'll see you then. Peace out.